So the rest of the time, the hands-on time we're going to use really just to just to slay lab three. Um, so if you've had a stab at one or more of the questions, that's great because honestly, I just want to go want to go around the circle and uh, hopefully solve everybody's problems. Don't don't be embarrassed. I mean, it's not due until the twenty second, which is more than a week from now. Um, so if you haven't started it, that's fine. You can you can maybe get it out and uh, try to do something as we're talking about it. If if something gets screwed up, then uh, I'll just get you to share your screen. Well, this is kind of a workshop through through Lab Three. So so I will do that as I as I flip over to I'll share screen again and get uh, get my R going here. And Omar, I think we'll be able to we'll be able to show people how um, I can be given control over your R console if, if that comes in handy. As you and I have done that a few times. This is, by the way, a really nice Permanova guide. This, this first is which I'll throw that link in. That, which I think you can see now. So deceptively, only three questions. And I will uh, get my arm up. I think I hope the uh, the download from my OneDrive folders are still working. Uh, if anybody's had trouble with that, just let me know. I find OneDrive changing sharing settings is I don't know. It's weird for me anyway because I'll, I'll change them and then they'll they'll flip back for some reason, but. So um, maybe what I'll do before I do the classification, just show you, because everybody at this point has their data entered and and uh, hopefully labeled. I find that helpful to do. But um, so we'll just take a quick look at the turtle data. Um, So turtle ID, sex habitat, and as I think I mentioned, all of the data except the habitat are real. Um, the habitat I just made up so that I could do a two-way ANOVA stuff, or two categorical predictors. Oh yes, and I also, um, another analysis that we don't do, I have, uh, food, available food, measured in grams, and uh, the temperature of the habitat. Again, those are those are uh, simulated data because we used to do something called canonical correlation where you can you can have response variables, uh, you know, quantitative response variables as well as quantitative predictor variables. Because you know, just like we talked about uh, ANOVA, where you have categorical predictors, and ANCOVA, where you have categorical 
and quantitative predictors. And uh, the, same, the same can happen in a multivariate context as well. Okay, so let me let me bring up the classification script. And I'll have it there and happy to turn it over to somebody else who's actually tried this question. If you if you've tried it and it seems to be working, I'd love to see it. If you've tried it and something's screwing up. Um, tell me all your troubles. Can I ask a quick question about this one? Yep. Um, do we need to make a new uh, column in our data set combining two of the categorical variables like the sex habitat one that's done? Or is there a way to do that in R? Uh, yeah, the, the way that I did it in R is line 15 there that I've highlighted. Okay, yeah, I tried to do it that way, but for some reason it wasn't working for me. So um, pro probably easiest if, can you share, Raina, so I can see, but I have a couple of theories, but maybe it would be. Sure. Yeah. One second. Yeah, I'll stop sharing. At this point, 95% of the problems I see are um, something to do with the attach command or some other problem with naming variables. Um, yeah, because there, there's a murky world. It took me a year or two to get this, <laughs> luckily a while ago, but um, it's separating in your mind um, the data set that you have stored sort of on your hard drive. And I'm just talking R format data set. And then you read it into sort of RAM here in your script and then, and then working on that. Sometimes there can be, can be problems, but anyway, let's have a look. So we've got bird. Yes. And you've attached bird, which is good in line seven. Yes. And that means that what I always do is um, if you could go over to the top right and, and click on bird so that we can actually over on the right. Yeah. Um, so that way I kind of remind myself exactly what the variable names are because sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, you know how picky R is about upper and lower case and all that wonderful yeah. stuff. Okay. So if you go back to your script and so we know now that um, variables that are in the bird data set, mm -hmm. we don't have to put bird dollar dive, right? Right. But another thing to remember, and this is what I was saying about, you know, this kind of murkiness between. So in line 10 there. Yes. Z dive is not going to magically be added to the bird data set, right? It's going to exist kind of in the life of the script. Mm -hmm. It's going to disappear. So just right. so clear on that. Okay. Yep. There, there are ways to add that, but that's, we don't need to, obviously. I didn't in the, anyway, okay. So we got Z dive is a Z score for dive. So maybe what I'll get you to do to start is just take the broom to your plots and to the variables. Yeah. Just clean everything and the plots as well down below. Yep. And just execute lines one to 12. Yeah, those ones work no problem. Yeah, I said that before and then. <laughs> I know if I if it didn't I work, I would have been panicking, but. <laughs> so, um, and I'm just, I don't mind the side here. So you've got breed success. Yeah. 
Yes, and this works as well without an issue. Um, it was actually once I kept going down to here that I couldn't run it with both words, with both okay. breed okay. and success. Let, let's just... But we can take it line by line, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, remember, I'm slow. Um, okay, so... So yeah, I think you've run line 16. Yep, yep. And so do, yeah, if, if everything works to line 24, just do those ones. So we'll get the actual. Okay. And uh, just move it up a bit so I can see a few more lines. Okay. Well. So when I run this, it's fine. Okay. But that's because I don't have both breed and success here. Yeah. Um, well, um, so you called it bird. I believe you call it bird underscore success up top. Yes. So, so that that's your problem. So, so. <laughs> if I change, I was following this script where you yeah. have, um, where is it? It's okay. I got it. I got it beside here. I'll I'll check out what I've done. Yeah, you did turtles. Ah, okay. okay. Sex habitat. So, right. I was trying to follow that, but then every combination I tried. It was an error. So then I just put just success to see if I could run the you know code and it worked that way. But obviously. Okay. I, I know what the problem is. Okay. <laughs> so my my line 15, mm -hmm. which you modeled yours after, mm -hmm. actually isn't used in mine. So, so what I did... Yeah, it's such a weird problem caused by me, and I'm sorry about that. But it's okay. Um, so, so the turtle data set mm -hmm. already included sex hab. Yeah, that's why I asked oh. if there's a way to incorporate it because yeah. <laughs> mine doesn't have breed success. Right. So. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, what what you can do is if you, uh, again, move up. Mm -hmm. So could have hit a return after line 15, the end of line 15. You know, where you do the breed success thing right at the end of it. Just hit return. Yeah. And say bird, capital B I R D, and then assign like angle dash. I don't know the proper the underscore. Term. No, the, the like the the, the angle. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, the same as the one you got right underneath it there, the angle bracket oh. and dash. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um is um C bind just it, the same format as you got just beneath it in line 17. So C bind bracket and then bird B I R D comma breed success. Got to put the underscore there. Yeah. Yep. And just just try to run lines one to seventeen and see if it blows up. It worked. Okay. Now I want you to hit bird the data set again, like up top there. It should have the variable on the end. Um. 
copy like the little spreadsheet. Oh, you yeah. want me to open it again? Okay. Just slide over. Oh yeah. Okay, we okay. can see it. Okay. So now go back to your and then let's go down to where you use that. Here, right? Yeah, but you need uh is it breed success? What was what was the name of the variable? Yeah, it was breed success. Okay, I try that. Okay. Should I have bird with the sign as well? It won't or hurt. Just... Yeah, it won't okay, hurt. Okay, just in case. <laughs> okay, give it a go. Uh let's see if it works. That's also kind of weird that I have that plus sign there, but I guess it's not causing. It seems okay. Okay, let's <laughs> hit hit the plot thing and see if you got anything. No plot. Yeah, so it's waiting for. So get just take away that plus sign. This one. Yeah. And then just hit next to run. Hit the. Uh oh. No, you get you gotta. Hmm. Yeah, I just just do control A and just run the whole thing and then just Okay. okay i think i have to change stuff now that we've made this yeah it actually can you, can you um make the plot bigger just so we can have a look at that mm. oh you know what it's doing okay <laughs> so it's it would be better if you did like a sideways dendrogram. Somewhere it says flip it and you don't want to flip it because all those long labels for your leaves are coming out over top of each other. That's why okay. it's all, yeah, just get rid of that one. Okay. Uh, no, good. <laughs> no. Control Z. Should, <laughs> should I get, get it back? Yeah, just get, just take away the control flip chord flip thing not the scale y reverse okay sorry <laughs> okay you can just see how that works Interesting. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of okay. Uh, erase all your plots. Okay. For a sec, and then just just kind of go all the way up because it, it there may be it may be defining some yeah okay. So it where still has it? it that way. Okay, so where it's stopping mm -hmm. is that extra H line thing. So it's actually doing <laughs> it's doing the dendrogram, but it doesn't like H line. So um could you 41 and 40, 43 put a hashtag at the beginning? Like I just, that's what I do if I'm wondering what's going on is take stuff out of action and see if that's what's caught. Now just, yeah. Interesting. So it actually worked, but it's not appearing. It's still, um, <laughs> Look back at mine for a sec. 
Ok. It was the cohort flip that that uh, put it on its side. So, okay, so we're gonna um, I'm gonna put those lines back in. I'll put them in the chat room so you can hopefully grab them. And... Okay. So keep that and it should work. <laughs> Hopefully. It's still the error. Yeah, there's something wrong with um that reverse thing. And you know you know what's going on is um it's something to do with that. See I put I put values on that that y-axis that are pertinent to my data and it may may just be screwing up because your data are different um let's let's try um 46 put a hashtag at the front of that and then get rid of the plus sign at the end of 45 because we don't want it kind of waiting for something okay try that Okay, it seemed to work, but there's no new plot. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know why. Because, <laughs> oh dear. Um, <laughs> so at the end of 38, it, it's just, See, it thought you were done the plot at 38. Oh, so the just get rid of this. Kind of, so put a plus sign there. Yeah. So, okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, we so got, pull, it, pull it out. That looks very busy. <laughs> yeah, well, it's because those phrases are so long. Um, yeah. And so we got to reverse the y-axis so let's go back to that line because okay. we, we want the you know like in my example we want the labels coming out on the right side it so won't look 46 90s. yeah so unhashtag that but then in no don't run it yet okay okay, okay. <laughs> um where it says expand equals just get rid yeah. of that. Get rid of what's inside the parentheses there from the word expand. So it's just blank inside the, yeah. Okay. No, but like right over, like cover up the oh. word expand. So it's just. Even yeah. get rid of expand as well? Yes. Yep. Oh, okay. Now, um, you're going to need a plus sign after chord flip because that's how you, you tell it there's kind of more to come. Yeah. Okay. That should be good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh. Okay, now make it bigger. It's a little bit yeah. better. <laughs> yeah, but it's the words are too long anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah. maybe so if I made the what, font really what, small. What people would do like for real, because you got <clears throat> you got more than forty eight things, I think. But anyway, it's like have a species code or something like SK, you know, like that, that kind of thing. So, because you still want that information, it's just yeah. 
it's not really it, it would qualify for one of those answers as to the worst figure <laughs> oh yeah um, we don't but... want that <laughs> okay so what, what i would do is um uh i can wait. do i can go to here and i can change the labels for my like assignments and yeah, just make there, them codes is there a species code in the data set right oh yeah I, oh yeah yeah so i can just turn like amazon kingfisher into 8k yeah, and that's, then that's probably the best the easiest way to do it okay cool um i'm gonna work on that and then maybe if there's time we can come back to me because yeah. i had another issue with a different plot um, but we can okay. come back to that after. Thank you for your help. Okay. Anybody I... else got got one ready to talk about? Uh, I have the the same issue as Raina. I had it running on my own, but I was trying to follow along there. Uh, and update it now that I've updated it to match it's no longer running okay you want to share it we'll just figure it I'm really glad to hear we have the same problem <laughs> I all I had done differently was instead of uh like the the name dollar sign just renamed it to um that c bind step but then I tried to follow this uh, the way you just explained, and then it kind of blew up in my face. So, yeah, it's it's and ours. That, that's why I'm so anal about the you know where the data sets are and names and that because mm -hmm. it's hard enough <laughs> when they're simple, but especially when you um you start doing transformations or whatever and yeah then, or the other thing in uh i think both the pca and the dfa i add the scores to the data set and um sort of keeping track of things are i mean the attach command is really convenient but it can really burn you because you, uh, you're not sure what's there and what's not like i'd totally forgotten that i put that sex have variable in the data set and that obviously is confusing for you guys because uh, yeah uh, is it coming up at all or it just says has started screen sharing okay it's are you on the i'm on my art like i can see my r screen but uh i'm also working from home and don't have the best internet so um i give it a sec if it doesn't load then uh yeah keep trying on my own and if i can't get it out i'll ask for help well the other thing you could do emily is um email me the r script and i can just okay. put it up online I just email it as an attachment, but okay. Weird, weird. Uh, I guess it, yeah, I guess it needs the bandwidth to send the full image of your screen. Yeah, I, uh, I'm not sure what's going on. I'll, you might, uh, you might be able to attach it in the chat through a file upload. Yeah, the chat. yeah, you can do um, a file. You can yeah. send a file in the chat now, can you? Yep. Maybe stop sharing because it'll uh, break. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm trying. My my whole uh, Zoom is frozen, so I don't know if you can. Yeah, I'll, I'll you off. Thank you. <laughs> there. I pushed you off the stage.
So I don't, I can't remember. I know it, I've done it in Teams. I can't remember attaching a file in the chat room and Zoom, but. They're all starting to merge together. <laughs> you pretty much done the lab there, Flavia? Or are you in observer mode? Yeah, while you're trying to get it over, I'm just gonna. Yeah, I'm I'm still frozen. So, uh, if anybody oh, else has a question, if you if you go out and come back in, that might help. I see. I I'm trying to, but my whole whole computer's locked up. So <laughs> I'll see if I can eventually get out. Like, are you still gonna be there when I'm? doing wordle tomorrow morning at five o'clock <laughs> hopefully not because i gotta do i haven't done the wordle today so oh, oh my goodness there we go I just asked you if you were working on the lab, Flavia. Don't worry. Yeah, I'm currently working on it in class, but haven't gotten anything concrete yet. Okay. Yeah, I guess the lesson just looking at this classification one is really about care, <laughs> care and variable naming. Um, so, as I was saying before, I I thought, oh, I, this line fifteen that I have is not needed because I've already got sex hab in the data set, and of course. I had it in the data set as as you can see up there, sex had no underscore in the middle. So I always talk about not being sloppy, and here I'm totally sloppy here. So So I do use sex underscore hab, and I also use sex hab without the underscore. Oh my God, this is terrible. It's okay. We still have nine days before lab three is due, so it's a good work. Oh, we're luckily, I don't have to so now. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, but we're happy to be here figuring it out now when we have lots of yes. time left, so. I'm just doing this on purpose to show you how easy it is to go wrong. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's great. Okay.
So we'll see if Emily um, is able to come back. But meanwhile, just to kind of emphasize, and then I'll go on so we have a little bit of time with the other scripts. Um, just the whole file naming thing. So there's where I'm reading in the R data set and calling it turtles. There's what the data set actually looks like. So it's got length, width, height, food, temperature, cut H class, K means cluster. So I've added those last two variables, as I'll show you in a sec, in this script. But meanwhile, line seven, I, I say attach turtles, and that means whenever I refer to one of the variables in the data set, I don't have to put turtles dollar sign and then length or whatever. I can just use the variable name. The reason that we were talking about being careful with that is lines 10 to 12 when I do Z scores. So it's using variables in the data set. So just I'm going to say this slowly because it gets needlessly complicated. So those lines are all using the variables in the data set length, width, and height. But the variables it creates, the Z scores, Z length, Z width, Z height, they are not being added to the data set, right? They're they're in memory there. I use them later on to, to actually do the classification, but they're not in the data set. They don't stay in the data set unless unless I explicitly added them. And then I calculate this, and that's that's what uh Raina and I were talking about it. I calculated this variable here in line 15 just to label my tree. This is not affecting the results of the classification or anything like that. It's just so you can see it on the tree over in the bottom right corner. Each observation gets labeled with the sex of the turtle, the habitat of the turtle. And that's just so I can eyeball the tree and say, yeah, it looks like all the females are in one of these two groups. All the males are in these three groups, you know, that kind of a thing. Then line 16, I create this little kind of mini data set, which is using that C bind command. It's, it's putting together these three vectors, Z length, Z width, and Z height. And that little data set's called Z turtles. And that's what it calculates the distance matrix from in line 19. And then the classification just uses the distance matrix. So we've, we've kind of left the data at this point, right? And the building of the tree uses the results of the classification. And way down here in line 35, this is still the building of the tree <laughs> script between lines uh, 25 and 38, where I have that <laughs> plus sign there that I was complaining to Raina about. So, oh, you know why I have the plus sign? Jeez, God, slipping today because they add the dashed line to the plot. Anyway, so this, this whole set of lines here uses the results of the classification. It also uses the variable sex hab to label each of those leaves, as they're called, of the tree. And then what's left to be done, which is why I had the plus sign, I'll get rid of line 38 so I don't screw that up again. Is that dashed line, that's where I define the dashed line, and then flipping the tree from being top, bottom to on its side and reversing the y axis so that you see it, the, the low number on the right and the high number on the left. And we still haven't used 
other variables from the original turtle data set yet. Line 47 is where I added to the turtles data set which group in the hierarchical clustering each individual turtle fell into. And then I do a table where I say, okay, tell me the actual sex and habitat group of the turtle and tell me which group it fell into in the classification. And then I do a box plot, or sorry, a bar chart that just shows you that table in a nice figure. Then I do the k-means clustering, and then I add the k-means cluster to the turtles data set. And then I do a table which compares sex habitat to k-means cluster group and the bar chart. And then I do a table that compares the hierarchical plus, uh, classification to the k-means and a bar chart of that, and that's it. So a couple of things to keep in mind, which where you may get screwed up on this. Uh, first of all, is in that naming thing. Be careful of those variable names. Be more careful than I was. Secondly, when it does stuff like the the plotting stuff that Rain and I were were uh, monkeying around with. So like when I have um, numbers that are affecting the axis scales. Remember, that's going to pertain to my values that I have. If yours are different, you could get screwed up. Like that was one of the things screwing up Raina's script. So the, the easiest thing to try is to get rid of um, parameters like that and see if it, it fixes your problem. Same thing happens if you look in the where I do these bar charts where I've got breakpoints. Uh, on the bar charts, and those are because of the frequency of observations I have. If, if you look at the bar charts, you know, I'm, I'm trying to uh, see how the hierarchical clustering, whether or not it jived with the k-means clustering classification, and it's based on the frequency of observations. So I've told it kind of where I want the breakpoints to be on that y-axis. That's going to be potentially quite different with yours because you've got different number of observations in each of your groups. So be careful of that. And those are the those are the main ways. But if you get screwed up, the easiest, you know, if we can't do it today, the easiest thing for you to do is just send me a message where you attach the script that's screwing up. That way I can run it and, and see. I'll also need the RDS, like the data set that it's reading in um, so that I can recreate the problem. Shall I move on, Emily? Yeah, you can move on. My bar is still frozen, so okay. I'll just try it again later. Thank you, though. Okay, so I, I'm gonna again. You know, we're we're down to 20 minutes or so, so I'm gonna go through. I'll I'll kind of hit on as I did there where you might run into a trap, and if somebody's got a specific issue with one of them, just just uh, jump in and we'll try to solve it because inevitably other people will have it okay so the next one was nmbs this is also done with the turtles and um exactly the same in fact what i did and you should do the same is this front end here is exactly the same as with the classification script so just copy and paste it in and I end up with you know I call it Q turtles here those are the Z scores and I do a distance matrix I, I happen to use a different uh, 
package and function to do distance matrix here just because of the NMDS thing, but um, you can you can track the two. And, and there's a bunch of stuff when you see hashtags and a bunch of lines like this, that's just uh, experimental stuff I've done in other contexts, don't worry about it. And then the actual NMDS all boils down to this one line 44 here. And then I add in line 48, and this is, again, something to remember. So I've augmented the turtles data set with the NMDS points. So those would be the actual values so that I could actually do that NMDS plot. And there's something really important about, and, and again, data management, Unfortunately, boringly, it ends up being like 95% of what you do in data analysis and stuff. But if I just, I'm going to take the broom to everything here. And I'm going to run this thing. I'll get rid of all the classification stuff. I'll do a control L so I clean out the console. And uh, I'll run it. And there's something I wanted to show you just to illustrate um, something. So here's the turtles data set. All I just clicked the upper left. And notice that I've got the two MDS axes there. But notice that in my script, I'm gonna let me just close up the classification one. In my script, so I have this C bind line 48 where I, I add the NMDS points to the data set, but there's nowhere down there that I actually save that onto disk. Okay. So if I go to my data sets, Jolicur, Mosem, and the RDS, it's turtles labeled .rds. That's the R data set. And I'm going to click on that. And there it is. And notice there's no NMDS variables there. Okay. So that's the difference between there's the turtles data set I have in memory in running the script. And there's the turtles labeled data set that I read in way back at the beginning here to, to execute this script. So and I get, you know, this is probably boring <laughs> over and over again. I say this, just be absolutely clear on what data do you have stored? What transformations or other stuff have you got in your script? If I wanted to save this, save those N NMDS points, what I could do, first of all, I would go back and remind myself what that command is because I never remember anything. So I could, I'll copy this line out and then at the end of the ordination script and I'll be saving this. So this will be the version that's here. So after I've done everything else in the ordination, I'm gonna take the turtles data set, the one that has the NMDS points saved and I'm gonna save it on my hard drive And I'll call it turtles underscore with nmbs.rds. So if all I've said just fills your mind with mud, <laughs> don't worry. You can just replay the recording of this a few times 
until it gets through what I've done in the script in the NMDS. I want to save it because I'm going to use those those NMDS points for something else later on. So I've got the script there. I'm gonna run the whole thing. And it all ran, it was great. And I go over to data sets. And look at the data set that I've just created, March 13th, 3.47 p.m. turtles with nmds.rds. If I open that up, there's my data set stored with MDS variables. Okay. Enough boring data stuff. So I was able to execute the script. Again, if you if you're careful with your variable names you shouldn't have a problem with this just for your information when i ran this remember i told you about stress and you can see here in the results of the nmds when it was finished doing all the tweaking of where each turtle was and everything it says stress equals 0 0.01356671 and there's a nice little uh, this nice little guide here that I'll put give you the link to in NMDS on NMDS basically does a better job than I did of going through that explanation of what NMDS is. But the thing that's cool here, I, I think I mentioned rules of thumb, and it says rule of thumb NMDS ordination with a stress value around or above 0.2 is deemed suspect. The stress value approaching 0.3 indicates the ordination is arbitrary. In other words, having stress that high is not good. If it's below 0.1, that's fair. Well, it's 0.05, good fit. So just, just kind of a rule of thumb. And here we got stress of 0.01. So, hey, that's great. Ready to publish that turtle paper, finally. So have a look at that link. Again, I'll stick it in with the uh, with the recordings in today's module. Um, okay, and I'm just going to wait for somebody to stop me. I'll just keep going here. And I, I mean, I have yeah. a question on this one, okay. if that's okay. <laughs> no, yeah, sure. Awesome. I wasn't sure when to jump in, so I didn't want to no, take up so... any time. But all right. Thank you. Oh, I have to wait till you're done sharing, but when you when you're ready, I'll oh. share my screen. <laughs> okay, so for this one, um, it was working fine until we got down here. The D R bind uh, line forty. It said error object not found. Okay. Um, I just got to, I'll move you to the side and I just got to check mine. Okay. Um, so part of this is I'm looking at line 40 and, and just remembering what line 40 is doing, it's taking to arbine means it's it's like a merging or adding one data set to the other yeah and i i think what you're doing actually reina is this you've unhashed the the lines 35 to 39 that i just said don't do it because it's kind of an experimental thing for me but um so it doesn't really matter anyways. Yeah, you should get yeah, that which is a terrible answer from a prof. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. Um no yeah what I'm what I was doing there was figuring out how far each observation was from the median observation. Um and that's that's kind of a stat I use to describe observations, but no, you 
you don't need that for the program to run. Uh, so I would just hashtag it all and ignore it. Or okay. just delete it, delete it from your um, script. What about this line? <laughs> yeah, this is more important. Okay. Uh, this, this, <laughs> this is what's preventing you from actually plotting the data. So yeah. Let's close look at this. Okay. Um, so, so I got an error that said error in data frame check names false arguments imply a differing number of rows 210 to 11. Yeah, and I, if I had to guess, um, probably missing data. So what, what's going on is um, <laughs> yeah. It, That's weird. So one of them has 211 rows, which sometimes means you've got some uh, number or word written at the bottom or something, but that's not the case because you're reading in this data, I think. So yeah, you might have a non-numeric, but that you would have discovered that already. Yeah. Um, and I have 210 rows. So that's yeah. why I thought it was strange. Can you go back to the actual... Okay, so I want you to I want you to just uh, run the thing and show me what happens now that you've got run that. everything. Okay. Yes, just run it all. First of all, say <laughs> you just respond to my commands too quickly. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. um, it's the same error from that I wrote above here. Yeah. Um, so. Um, For some reason, there's 211 values that it's generated scores for. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's very difficult for me to figure that out. Do you want me to send you the script? Yeah, send, send me the data set and the script. OK. And it, yeah, just detach. So just RDS is the type. For the data set and um, an R for the script, and I'll, I'll figure it out. It's just some wonky thing with the, yeah, there's a weight <coughs> value in there somehow. I'll just put it in the chat right now, but no rush, just so you have it. Yeah. If that's okay. Yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> Okay, well, while you do that, I'm not seeing it yet, but maybe it's um, just because of timing here. I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to quickly look for, uh, I'll run the PCA and I'm an OVA and quickly look for any, any oddball things that I should just flag. For you and luckily since it isn't due to the 22nd um we'll have a bit of time after uh i get you into statistical rethinking next week to uh to deal with any last things or or in between then just send me something and deal with it but, okay so um Yeah, the PCA in terms of data is quite a bit simpler because um, you can, you know, you, you basically directly put in the, the PCA model. Um, so I've, I've uh, read the data set. I just have a, a hashtag line number nine there where you can subset, you can pull out a subset if you want to of groups. I'm just taking all of the turtle data in and then um, 
line 14 is where the action is in terms of PCA. And the only thing to worry about there, I think in virtually every case, people have variables measured in different units. So core is going to equal true. You're going to use the correlation matrix for the PCA. And uh, scores equals true just means it calculates for each observation what its value is on each of the uh, new PC axis printable component axes. And then I add, just like I did with the uh, ordination, the NMDS ordination, I add the PC scores to the end of the data set. And, and then it's really just a matter of doing various plots with those with those PC scores. So um, there's the, the PCA results are coming out there with the role that each variable plays in defining the axes. You see with the SPLOM in the lower right, that's the final plot that's done. You can sort of see graphically the relationship between each uh, original variable and the principal components. And then you get your scree plot is the second last plot. And the first plot is just plotting PC1 versus PC2. Anyway, I, th I think those ones should be pretty straightforward. Again, if I wanted to right now, right now the turtles data set um, in its latest form will include uh, three PCs, so you know, three-dimensional data, so three principal component scores. Um, if I wanted to save those, I would do the same save uh, our command, our data set command as, as previous with, I did with the MDS. Anywho, um, so like I said, that one should be fairly straightforward. And then um, the final one that you have to, to uh, do is the MANOVA. And th this one is, a lot of it is, is kind of black box. You're, um, and I'm using the iris data in this case. Um, and I have, to start out, I just read the iris data, the Fisher iris data, and attach the data set. I'm sorry, I'm just cleaning out the, the other stuff so it doesn't confuse us. Um, and then I make the, I'm comparing the species, so I make that into a factor variable just to make the representation of it in plots uh, clearer. I do univariate ANOVAs with the lines 20 to 28 there. And then the actual MANOVA, multivariate analysis of variance, is line 32. So I've defined the response variables in line 31. And then I say MANOVA response QVARES as a function or as predicted by species. And then this whole big package between lines 35 and line 90, or sorry, line 86, is the discriminant function analysis. So that's figuring out the discriminant scores. Those are the axes that are best separating the three species and then plotting them. And then finally doing a, a SPLOM, a scatter plot matrix. So if we just take a look at that, I'll just run the whole thing. And there's actually less ways for you to get into trouble here. But if you do get into trouble, it can be harder to kind of figure out where you've gone wrong. So. And probably the best tactic if you, if you get stuck with this one is uh, sending me the, the script that you're working on and uh, your data set, and I'll, I'll try to run it myself.
So there's the squam showing you. It's just it just plots uh, DF1, the first discriminant axis, the best one versus all the original four variables here along the, the bottom row. And then it has this, uh, this plot with DF1 on the x-axis, DF2 on the y-axis showing the, the three species. And then in the console is where, just like with the PCA, You've got the uh, the classification matrix. You know how well did the discriminant functions do in actually allowing you to classify the species? But then uh, the role that each original variable plays in defining the discriminant axes are there, and the significance of the difference. There, there's the uh, equivalent to an ANOVA table there showing the, the difference among the species uh, across those four floral dimensions there. And then the individual analysis of variance for each of the response variables. Okay, so we'll have to wrap it up there, but um, as I said, you know, work, work away on it when you get the chance and when you get stuck, uh, send me your stuff and uh, we'll take some time after the lecture next next Wednesday um, to talk about what, what you've got left or what you are still stuck on in lab three at that point. <laughs>